Walker, worldwide manufacturer of emission control systems for the automotive industry, is nowadays one of the biggest and technologically more advanced emission control manufacturers in the world for both for the original equipment and for the aftermarket. Thanks to this invaluable advantage, Walker is able to use all this OE experience acquired during the last century, building top-level emission control systems, following the most strict environmental regulations for almost all all known OE manufacturers for producing top-level products for aftermarket customers worldwide. In this episode, we're going to talk about the important topic of the catalytic converter customer claims. After this training, we'll be able to determine how many of those claims can be considered real warranties and which ones are caused due to a faulty installation or other problems, helping us to avoid them effectively in the future. Let's start! There are several ways to verify if a catalyst is damaged. The main ones are by means of an infrared four-gas analyzer, in the case of gasoline vehicles, by means of an auto-diagnosis tool for the most modern vehicles, using an infrared thermometer over the catalytic converter housing, and by visual inspection. In this episode, we're going to focus on the visual inspection methods of analysis because of their simplicity. In general, to make a correct diagnosis of a catalytic converter, this one shouldn't show signs of gas leaks or advanced rusting. Any gas leakage due to a cracked pipe, failed weld or faulty clamp connection in the exhaust system will alter the internal back pressure of the system, giving as a result an increase in the amount of fuel and oxygen in the exhaust gases, which will end up being burnt on the surface of the catalytic converter monolith. This situation always ends up melting the catalytic converter monolith, rendering it useless for use. If the pipe is cracked before the first lambda probe, the ECU will put the system into emergency mode, that is, with a rich air-to-fuel mixture. This situation will accelerate the monolith melting process and significantly shorten the useful life of the catalytic converter. This fault rapidly causes an increase in the system back pressure that has a very negative effect on the engine output, consumption, and especially other elements of the emission system that might be completely damaged. It is important to remember, when a diesel or gasoline engine works properly, the maximum temperature that will be achieved upstream the catalytic converter will remain under 800 degrees Celsius. Therefore, all types of catalytic converter failures that involve melting processes of the internal monolith are not considered manufacturing warranties because the temperature needed to melt the monolith core of a catalytic converter oscillates between 1,400 degrees Celsius of the ceramic monoliths and 1,600 degrees Celsius of the metallic monoliths, both values far away from the normal working temperatures of the engine. The only way to achieve those abnormal temperatures that melt the catalytic converter's monolith is by burning fuel over the surface of the catalytic converter's monolith. And when this situation happens, it's always due to problems not related with the catalytic converter. Faults at the ignition system, such as faulty spark plugs, damaged or rusted ignition wires, advanced or retarded ignition, etc. The use of non-approved emission control parts, in addition to air intake or compression faults at the cylinders, burnt exhaust valves, caused by previous back pressure problems in the exhaust system, are the most common causes of all the problems related to melted catalytic converters. In such faults, the catalytic housing may be darker in colour, a bluish red as a result of the internal overheating. Another possible catalytic converter failure is due to lead contamination. This failure occurs when fuels or additives that contain lead are burnt in the combustion chamber of a vehicle equipped with a catalytic converter. Some octane-enhancing additives designed for old leaded petrol included lead in their composition. In these cases, the catalytic function is destroyed very rapidly. The catalyst is generally completely ruined in 1,500 kilometers because the lead is deposited on the precious metals of the monolith, 
preventing them from coming into contact with the exhaust gases and blocking the catalytic function. Due to the nature of this failure, it's obvious that it can't be considered as a warranty in any case because it is not related to any manufacturing problem. Another problem that is related to monolith contamination is the one caused by the use of sealing paste upstream the catalytic converter. Exhaust system sealing paste has silicon as part of its composition, which when burnt produces a whitish powder that is deposited on the precious metals of the monolith, permanently cancelling their catalytic function and the measuring function of the lambda probes. Therefore, any connection upstream the catalyst, or in modern vehicles upstream, the last electronic sensor of the emission control system must be made with a new seal designed for this purpose, and never with a sealing paste. It is easy to understand, as in the previous case where the monolith was contaminated by lead, that these types of claims are never considered as manufacturing warranties, because those problems have nothing to do with the manufacturing processes. Another type of catalyst fault is the one that is produced due to monolith cell obstructions. This failure occurs when the gas passage of the catalytic converter's monolith is obstructed by deposits of foreign materials, such as salt coming from cooling liquid leakages burnt at the combustion chamber, carbon particles coming from uncompleted combustion from the chamber, or phosphorus particles generated from the lubrication oil burnt at the combustion chamber. These kinds of problems significantly increase the back pressure level of the system, causing serious power output problems, increase of fuel consumption, melting of the catalytic converter monolith, and reduction of lifespan of other system emission control systems, such as DPFs and SCR catalysts. To detect this kind of fault, Teneco recommends using a fast diagnosis tip that is to unscrew the lambda probe upstream the catalytic converter in order to check the status of its measuring surface as its appearance informs us about the status of the catalytic converter monolith. A special type of monolith damage is the one produced when the vehicle operates during a long period using a rich air to fuel mixture. In this type of failure, the catalytic converter monolith receives a continuous flow of unburnt fuel. In normal engine working conditions, the temperature of the monolith will be between 500 and 600 degrees Celsius, temperatures that are high enough to make the unburnt fuel auto-ignite when it gets into contact with the monolith's surface. After auto-ignition, fuel burns at 1840 degrees Celsius, while the melting point of the cordialite or stainless steel from which the catalytic converters monoliths are made are 1400 degrees Celsius and 1600 degrees Celsius. Therefore, when this occurs, some melting points start to appear at the surface of the monoliths that look like small irregular holes over the surface that end up blocking the gas passage. This situation, as in the problem mentioned before, leads to serious power output problems, increase of fuel consumption, melting of the catalytic converter monolith, and reduction of lifespan of other systems emission control systems, such as DPFs and SCR catalysts. Due to the nature of these failures, this failure can never be considered as a manufacturing warranty because it is not related to any manufacturing problem. A very common type of failure, observed mainly in cars that used to park over the pedestrian areas, drive over parking ramps with a high inclination angle, or drive fast over high speed limiters, is the cracked monolith due to impacts received over the monolith housing. It is important to remember that due to the fact that more than 86% of the catalytic converters are built with a ceramic core, any impact capable of leaving a permanent scratch of more than one millimeter deep and one millimeter thick on the metal of the catalyst housing is capable of fracturing the interior of the monolith. This issue will leave the catalytic converter totally useless. 
These types of scratches are generally caused by strong impacts of the catalytic converter housing when the vehicle drives over parking ramps or drives fast over high speed limiter bumps, commonly known as sleeping policemen. Therefore, it is easy to understand, as in the previous cases, that these types of claims can never be considered as manufacturing warranties. Catalytic converter failure due to cracked pipes or mufflers. Any cracked pipe failed weld in the emissions system parts or rusted exhaust clamps will generate gas leaks, modifying the internal back pressure of the exhaust system. This situation will result in an increase in the amount of unburnt fuel and oxygen in the exhaust gases, which will end up melting the surface of the catalytic converter's monolith with a very characteristic pattern, leaving it useless in a short period of time. One of the most common causes of this type of problem results from the natural wear of the exhaust rubber hangers. When these units wear, the vibrations transmitted to the exhaust ends up generating cracks at the welding area where the pipe is fixed to the side cover of the muffler. Apart from the problem caused for a faulty weld cord that is directly related to the manufacturing process of the exhaust parts, the rest of these failures cannot be considered manufacturing warranties. We are Garage Gurus. Join our community, follow us on social media. Thanks for watching this video. The video description contains all the relevant links. Don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and be notified when we post new content. Also, check out our Garage Gurus online course catalog.